Town hall number 62. We've got a lot to cover, so we're going to just kick it off. I'm going to, I'm sharing my screen. Everybody can see it, I hope. And uh, yes, so in this town hall, we are going to have a few updates from uh, Cyclide, from CBO, from ourselves. So without further ado, uh, just to cover off uh, Cyclide update, CBO and Insights update, Platform OS update, but we'll just go straight over to you, Luke. I know it's late in your part of the world, so uh, go for it, mate. You have the floor and I will let you share your screen. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, great to be back. I'll just get my screen shared. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, it's not that long since we were, we were here before, I think a few weeks ago now in, in July. Um, we've been, been pretty busy. We've got a, a big update um, for e-commerce in the background, but we still managed to get quite a few uh, important things that we wanted to just let you know about. So um, I'll jump straight into it because I know we've got a lot to, lot to get through. So one of the first ones is actually uh, quite a strategic update rather than features and um, product. Uh, we've been spent quite a few months working with um, WSI, who are the world's largest um, digital marketing network. And we've been working with them to become an authorized supplier so that their digital marketing experts all around the world can use uh, SiteGlide uh, as one of their one of their solutions for building websites, but also business catalyst replacement. Um, and I think we've got a few few of their um, internet consultants on, on the call today, actually. I know I saw Mark earlier and maybe some others. Um, great to be working with, with those guys and um, yeah, looking forward to uh, meeting many more. So WSI have been doing their sort of due diligence over the last few months and looking at the looking at platforms and options and yeah really pleased to say that um, they've sort of picked us for um, especially the the BC replacement but also any kind of projects and um, we're actually sponsoring their annual convention uh, which is in Cancun this this year in October so we'll be there and get to meet all, all, all the partners and look forward to meeting the team as well and really sort of growing that uh, relationship so that's one thing. Um, I'll jump on now to some feature, feature-based updates. So one is um, a new rich text editor. So in web apps and certain places, you've got a, an editor, a sort of standard sort of WYSIWYG rich text editor for um, just editing content and things. The last one was, was pretty good. There were some good things about it, but um, we decided to com completely overhaul it and, and make sure it's better for copying co uh, content in from anywhere, so Word or whatever it might be, or websites, um, managing things like tables and images. So, um, oh, sorry. So <laughs> it was the uh, WSI page and a bit more information about them. But I'll show you a quick uh, video that Dean's put together for me. He's been he's been working on this um, rich text editor, and I'll just quickly play this one and, and talk you through it. So you can go into one of the one of the web app items. That's just got some standard content in it at the moment. You'll see when you preview that item, that's just just showing some some sort of basic content. He's then going to go off to. We've picked our blog. Just picked a blog post, but you could get it from from anywhere really. Just grab loads of content, copy that, and drop it into the new editor. That's also a whole load of content just, that just went in there. And then you can kind of do all the normal things, really. Um, some of the things you used to be able to do, but there's some, some enhancements. So I kind of think what he's going to show you first. <laughs> um, change, changing headings. There's actually a full screen mode. So you can just jump into that and do anything like if you want to add a link. Um, one of the big things would be imagery that wasn't good enough with the last one and that we wanted to work on. So in a second, Dean will um, create, a, create an area to put an image in. He's just going to put a new, uh, new heading in there. And then you've got an image button up on the top. You can just drop in an image from your computer, just grab it, upload it, and that will drop it in. We are working on our file manager to make sure that you can use existing imagery and, and manage folders and everything like you would. But you'll see that's actually picked the URL from the instance that the image will be on. More updates from Adam later, I, I think, on uh, vanity URLs, which would be nice to see, that, see those in there. Um, another thing, yes, yeah, so this is previewing that. Once you save that item, you can just see all that content and it's just put it in, in um, like 
exactly how it should look. One other nice thing, uh, there's quite a few, uh, yeah, that'll show the image for the vanity URL. There's quite a few things that you can do where you would be able to drop in YouTube links, for example. You don't have to sort of um, spend time getting the, uh, the embed code. You can literally just drop a uh, video in using the um, video embed button. So some really nice features of that editor that hopefully you guys will find useful for managing blog posts and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't know if there are questions, but maybe just jump to them at the end, I think, I guess, probably easier. Um, next up is our billing engine. So we've talked about this before. I'm just going to show you a couple of screenshots from that. We're making really good progress on it. It's not far away. It runs off the platform OS billing system to some extent in terms of the, um, where the plans are made and the sites and everything. But then we've um, actually hooked up to Stripe Connect so that you can take our plans and potentially mark them up with your own pricing or add your own services on top so that you've, you've just got full control. And what actually happens is in, in the portal, you would log in and you'd set up your, you connect to Stripe, so you click a button, it would connect to your Stripe um, account and or if you don't have one, it would help you set one up. And then once that's happened, you'd set up some plans. So you take our light plan, let's say $30, you'd call it whatever you want, set the currency and then pick a price. And what would happen then is the client would, you'd send an email, you, you'd sort of set that on a site that you want to use the light plan. It would potentially send an email to the client where they would log in and see that plan with your pricing and your information for them to put in their card details. Again, securely using Stripe, it's all SCA compliant and PCI compliant. Um, when that happens, the payment would be taken from the customer's card. They'd be paying you directly, which is quite an important point. And we would just be taking a, something called an application fee from that, and then Stripe fees are taken off afterwards. So you can you can mark up your plans and we just take the, the standard fee for for the plan based on based on our plans so hopefully that allows you to do fully automated recurring billing um, and, and and manage everything all from here then we'll be bringing in dashboards and reporting tools so that you can see um, how how that's working um, and yeah i think that was everything i was going to show you on billing just going to jump back over to here I'm going to fly through because I know that Shane, you probably got quite a bit to talk about uh, as well as Adam. Uh, <clears throat> one more feature would be form updates and custom fields. So forms have been pretty, pretty powerful, but um, we've made some pretty big updates to allow them to be more flexible, but adding in features like payments as well. So just jumping back over here, I've got a little bit of a demo for you. Um, in the back end, there's a feature called uh, custom field sets. So that's a bit like um, CRM extension in BC, where you could create some new um, fields that you can add on top. So if we just go here, you can add your own field set. I'll just go to one that already existed. So you can add any new sort of fields with the same kind of types that you would have in um, in web apps and once they're built, you can apply those to things. So if we go to um, a form, for example, um, and go into here, and go edit form. So you can do your normal form fields, but you can also add a custom field set. So that's going to put that product extension one on there. And then those fields would appear on, on the page. So we've got a very basic page here where you'd fill in the, the standard fields, but then it will also show those custom fields um, from the custom field set. And then another feature that you can do is add um, payments. So you just turn a payment on for that. It's, this is just a basic form um, payment, but we've got sort of subscription and checkout coming as, as part of e-commerce. And then you can set a value, the, the minimum value that you want to take. At the moment in this very basic version, um, it's just gonna take that minimum, but you've got total control over how you wanna set that up. So you might decide to show an amount or ask someone to type in the amount if they're paying an invoice, for example. There's kind of loads of different options that you can you can have there. You could even link it up to web apps and or form fields for different products. So totally up to you what you do. Um, I'll just put in the same same details. These are two of the um, whatever you're going to type in those. So these two are the fields from the custom field set. 
and then you would put in card details obviously you could show billing address those kind of things these are just the test field uh, test payment details for stripe and then when you submit you can put your own um spinner on there and thank you message and everything but in the background that's going to then against the user it will create the user if they didn't already exist but it will also add the extension from from the custom field set so you can see a record of what what they filled in from those forms you also get the case so when somebody's filled in just got a little warning that we bring up at the moment while this is in development but you'll see all the details of that specific form submission and we're adding in the payment as well so you'll see the details about the payment i've got a bit of a screenshot for you of how that then looks in Stripe. So it would have taken that £10 and stored it against that customer and um, managed it all securely within Stripe. So that's a bit of a quick update. There's loads that you could then do with this. So custom field sets allow you to extend pretty much anything. Um, we're going to add that to e-commerce for products. We're going to add it to yeah CRM. Um, there's all sorts of ways that you could extend um, certain features with with new custom fields and then payment obviously allows you to do subscriptions and all sorts of things um, so yeah just a bit of an update on that that's all being released very very soon it's in um, in alpha just in final testing and very quickly i'll show you a couple of other things um, we showed you email marketing uh, in the last town hall, but we've got a bit of an update to that just before it comes out in uh, in full release with e-commerce, which is only um, days away, <laughs> I'm going to say. Um, so what I've got here is this demo that Dean put together for me. I'll just run through this one as well. So you can create a campaign. This is all hooked up with SendGrid um, as it was before, um, but you can create a campaign, put a subject, pick your date that you want to send it out, then pick any lists that you want to want to send it to. You can do multiple lists, but a feature you won't have seen is our new visual um, email builder. So just you can you can just edit any content. We're going to look at having different temp templates and layouts, but you'd also be able to um, work with your own as well. But for now, you can update imagery, add new sections in as well, which we'll show you. There's a little plus button and then that allows you to add in, uh, add in more content. So you can really build out uh, email campaigns right within Cyclide. Um, and do your sort of standard customization really. I'll just be linking off to a, <coughs> a blog post perhaps. Then when you're ready and you've done all the design, there is still the HTML version. So that will show you the HTML should you want to go in and edit it. But when we do user roles, we can we can hide that element if you wouldn't want the client going there. Responsive view as well. Then you can actually schedule it. That will send it off to SendGrid and send it either in a couple of minutes if you've clicked now or on the dates and time that you've you've picked. So we're very, very close to releasing that and pleased to say it'll now have the visual side. And you'll see here just quickly from the SendGrid side of things that it shows you that it's just added that new campaign in and shows you what it's going to look like from the SendGrid side of things as well, which is exactly the same. <clears throat> this would all hook up to your own version of SendGrid, so you'd have your own account as part of the, the plan and that's all integrated um, via uh, platform OS have done that integration and then we're using that to allow people to send emails from it uh, including autoresponders and web uh, workflows as well and then here's just a quick uh, example from my email um, <clears throat> client web version of it showing that email once it's been sent so hopefully that's a really really useful one especially on the marketing side of things for for clients perhaps to be able to quickly uh, create and send out campaigns. As I say, we'll do more on things like templates and design uh, and once we get some feedback as well. A um, couple of tiny other bits that I just thought I'd show if I've got a few minutes. Um, we're actually working on our own site, uh, redoing our site and making sure it's 
um, got all the information on that you would need to be able to um, refer to customers and um, help you sort of with the sales information. You'll actually notice that it's um, built using design system. So we've taken design system layouts and piecing that together. Obviously, you then just go in potentially using visual um, editor and just start editing the content. And yeah, so we're just customizing that, getting it all together and hoping to get that live pretty soon. One page we've got, I think might be quite useful is sort of features overview. So we're doing a page all about the different features and you'll be able to see a quick screenshot. So I know quite a few partners have been asking for a little bit more information to be able to explain what features are there. Um, so we're, we're working on all of that and we'll get it across as soon as we possibly can. Absolutely, <laughs> final one is um, we've been working on a open SRS integration so that you can bring across email from Business Catalyst but also have an email option for clients so that with the DNS and SSL features that Platform West are um, releasing very, very soon, you'll then also be able to do email and domains from, from within SiteGlide. So we'll have everything all in within the UI and it's another value add and potential markup that you can add to your pricing plans or offering. So this is just a basic UI we've got for now, but we'll drop that into the proper one once we finish the, the full integration. So yeah, so whistle, whistle stop tour of where we're up to. Um, I don't know if I want to jump into any questions. Yeah, if you have yeah. got questions, let's um, let's table them to the end so that we make sure that we got plenty of time. Sure. For so sure. that's great. <laughs> awesome update. And that last one with OpenSRS uh, and the DNS API, you'll also be able to automatically have all the relevant MX records automatically inserted into DNS zone files. Uh, with just not having to worry about it because you know uh, there's a template for OpenSRS and it's like click add it and I don't have to worry about it unless they're using external DNS service and therefore they will have to go off and use that DNS service to add their records but uh, that's a brilliant update Luke thank you very much I'm excited I'm very excited let's go and um, go ahead and share my screen again congratulations too to the uh, site client team on getting that big deal with WSI and uh, it's uh, not a nothing to sneeze at and uh, well done let's share my screen can everybody see actually can you all see my screen yep good all right yes you can all right I'll go into uh, present mode and we will continue on all right so Platform OS, what have we been up to? I'm gonna go through this quickly. Uh, some of the things we touched on in the last town hall, but we just thought we'd drill in a little bit more just to, to go over some of the, the details. Um, as you know, there are the release notes that are part of every release that we do. And uh, the last release notes, actually they're right here. Uh, we talked about a few things, as you can see. Uh, some improvements and the asset accessible via the relative path in an assets directory. So it's very specific to this directory. Uh, it's not every single folder. Uh, and the reason for that is there is a rewriter happening similar to what many other CMSs do. They have dedicated specific folders where they can then point that traffic off somewhere else. But the good news is from your development, design, all your assets can go into a vanity URL. And then step two to that is making it so that uh, all CDN assets can also be accessed via that uh, vanity URL. The, the reason why uh, it's just done on this folder at the moment is it just opens up a whole bunch of cool things, particularly around uh, being able to have service workers and other things that uh, front-end developers want and need. So, that's a big deal and it's the first of many new and cool things that we have in the works. Uh, many of you know that we're also working on a microservice to bypass the application layer for Liquid so that you can just go straight to GraphQL, define models and bypass Liquid altogether if you wish. It opens, up us, uh, opens us up to the ability to also have other microservices for different rendering engines really easily. So Liquid today, solid tomorrow. See what I did there anyway. All right, uh, so that's a big improvement and it's paying dividends. We also have, and let me just make sure I uh, have the PowerPoint here, here we go. This impacts service workers. So for example, where we're talking about this 
assets folder mapping directly back to a, a service that we can control uh, and have the vanity URL. Service workers, and I think Daryl's in the room. Daryl, you probably want to take a, a dig into this. Uh, your um, single, page, single page applications uh, manifest, manifest files. I know you did this really cool thing using pages and uh, liquid. So well done on that. But the dedicated vanity URLs with you being able to have your service worker JS file in the assets folder is uh, probably a big step up for you as well. Let me see if you commented. Um, no, not yet. All right, everyone's complaining about my dad jokes instead. But Daryl, take a look at that. Love to get your feedback on it. And anybody else who are doing, oh, woohoo, good. All right, so there's positivity right there. And we've also got some of our team who are doing some single page applications as well. And it's uh, being used in a very proactive way. And we're looking at a lot of other things um, to do as well. There's also a note from Pavel that the sw.js on the root is also in progress. Fab icon, that stuff as well. So uh, root for sw.js uh, will be also supported. For those who care, all right. Other things going on. Oops, I'll just close that. Other things going on is the DNS SSL automation. Again, we covered this the other day, but specifically it is now on production. See that URL? That's production. See this? This is I want domain in platform OS or I'm, I'm using some other DNS provider. Uh, one click to make it happen. SSL provisioning, all of that's done. If you're managing DNS on platform OS, that'll all be seamless and easy. If you are using third party DNS, that's gonna be a little bit extra step. Of course, name server records have to be updated, but as far as SSL and provisioning of that is all concerned, again, seamless, all behind the scenes. You don't have to think or worry about it. And it just scales to the Billy, Billy O. That's an Australian term. It means it's good. So. Uh, that's really cool. It's in production. You won't see this yet. It is being used by a handful of people and we're just wanting to make sure that we go from alpha into general availability in the next week. Um, that's hand in glove with the Sydney stack being released as well. So Sydney data center. Uh, let's take a look. Where are we? So in our special little option here that again is a hidden option data centers. We can go ahead and just add data centers wherever they are on any AWS region, Azure, Google hosting, our own rack space servers, whatever. Uh, we are only doing AWS at the moment just in terms of uh, focus, but the architecture will support any other infrastructure as a service. So we can go along and add those. Sydney's latest stack is actually uh, about to go live. So you will start to see that when you go into your instances and you want to set up and create a new instance, of course, you'll be able to select uh, Production Sydney uh, very soon. That was done hand in glove with DNS. So that's why we wanted to make sure both are happening at the same time. Uh, and that is the case. The new partner portal, new UX UI, uh, is part of the design system that we've been working through. Again, we touched on it the other week. There's some cool things happening there. Uh, and our UX design team have got a link that we would like to share with everybody. So let's just pop this up in chat. For those watching the video, we'll have a link to this. And very progressive, good one, Brandon Byrne. You're a dad too, aren't you? All right, so there's the link. And what we'd love for you to do is go onto that link, which is here, and start and then click on one of the versions of the designs that you would like to uh, review, which I cannot see at all here. Let me just refresh this page, reload. Let's go for the one on the left. Um, I couldn't see it when I clicked on it. Just I'll quick start again. The blue button. You gotta click the button. There's click to view images. Yeah, I thought it came up. All right, okay. Well, it's extra click. I already logged in. Boy, these UX people. All right, good. Thank you for the hint. And go in, take a look at uh, 
at each image. And there's just a different treatment done to one style versus another. This is for the new partner portal. So a lot of stuff going into information architecture, making things more, make more sense, you know, the creation of an instance, then adding users for permissions to that. This is your developer users, streamlining everything. So take a look, what's your preference, the left one or the right one? And you'll notice here that uh, you can take a look. I was just moving some things out of the way and you can choose one, choose one or the other. And that will be good feedback for us. I will not tell you my preference. Um, you might not like either of them, but the idea is to set us in a specific direction as we go ahead and uh, start to refine around the final designs. In that, we're also doing some other stuff which uh, we're using Figma for. So we've got our different versions here and everything's being laid out. We've got a lot of work going on. So it's not just a couple of screenshots, but we're working on all of the CSS and everything. And uh, the team are doing an awesome job using Figma to get this project moving along very fast. So again, we want to just get some feedback from you all and then double down in that direction. Uh, other things, whoops. Go back to here. Um, remember, please vote for Platform OS with our Dev Portal Awards. So if you haven't already, go to the, uh, the Dev Portal Awards and click on the link, which I'm gonna hopefully be able to click on if it lets me. Uh, the link is down here and it won't let me click. There we go, found it. So if you haven't already done so, please, we would love it if you went over there and uh, if you went and voted, that would be great. On that note, we do have an announcement to make, which Diana will be making in September. I think it's the third or some date around there. We actually have won an award for our documentation site, separate from this one. It's one that's actually peer reviewed. It's not one where we can crowdsource voting like we're doing now. It's actually done through a, an organization out of the UK and we've been invited to be presented with that award. And there'll be more details on that later. I can't say exactly all the information yet because it's, um, we've been asked not to share until the actual date, but I can at least say that we've won an award by whom, for what, watch this space, but very proud. And it's all been due to the incredible efforts that our team have been putting into doing great documentation, uh, particularly, and, and I know he's in the room, Pavel, uh, and of course, Diana, who's headed up the whole focus around docs as code and our streamlined approach to that. So awesome stuff there. Very, very uh, proud of, of the team for that. Uh, thanks everybody on my side. That's a quicker update. I didn't want to capitalize too much because I want to give Shane the floor if he's back in the room to take it over from here. So Shane, are you there, mate? Yeah, well, uh, we'll try this again. Okay. All right. Well, I can share my screen now. Yep. Cool. So I'll do that and then you can do the talking and I'll do the clicking. All right. So, All right. so we'll, uh, we'll talk through three modules today. Um, so this is, that's the, the standard dashboard that you get when you install um, Core. So we're going to go under CRM and then to Customers. And we're going to uh, edit a contact. So we just pick, uh, yep, go under Edit. So we've um, updated the, the design to be a, a tabular view. And uh, we've got some new fields in there, such as the gender. Uh, we've try to be politically correct and add other in there. Um, we've got a, a new field there with uh, contact status as well. And if you can just go through the top tabs, so you've got addresses, uh, social. So you can add a bunch of different addresses, um, go to the notes. And we've also added some external uh, fields in there as well. So if you're integrating a system with an external third party, you can, um, you know, specify what that data is for and an ID and then a payload. So if, if you're um, trying to, you want to push information in or pull that out from a specific contact um, and these external fields are also available at a company level too. 
So yeah, exactly, Salesforce ID. So we're, we're doing some things about um, some insurance projects and we want to store the member IDs and things that, that happen in other systems or zero, what have you. Um, it's a great way to have that native and have that endpoint available without it being nested and creating an, an external model. So one thing um, we're really looking forward to working with Platform OS on is the ability to extend a module. So we can extend the data that uh, it comes out of the, the package for a modules model. Um, okay, so let's go back to the main menu and I'm gonna show you the permission manager. So this is a new module and we'll go into the groups. So the, this is fairly similar to, to BC's, um, but uh, we've enhanced it a fair amount. So instead of adding a contact directly to a secure zone, you actually add the contact to a group, and then you can add groups to a secure zone or an API token. So we see here we've got uh, our bronze, gold, and, and silver. And um, so you can easily just go and add a new group. And we've also made sure that we logged all of the history um, because history is, is super important when we're talking about permissions. So everything that you do throughout this permission manager is logged and there's a full um, before and after change log of what's happening. So here a moment, we've got our, our bronze members and um, go back to the contact list and we go assign contacts. So this will bring up all of your contacts inside the, the CRM. So let's just add um, Lowell plus 17, for example. Let's, yeah, let's, let's do that, you can add me. All right, okay. Click that row and then apply. And um, what that's doing is adding that user to that group and it's now subscribed. So we've got our group set up. If you go back to the, the contact list history, you'll see that, that tab there. Um, so you can see who's done it as well. So we, we really want to track who uh, is performing that update and what their IP address is um, for audit control. So now we've got some members inside a group. We can go over to secure zones on the left hand side and we can create a secure zone and assign that group. So let's just call this Adam zone. Yep, okay, so what this is doing here to the UI, as you can see, it's actually creating a Platform OS authorization policy. Um, and then you can set your, your redirection. So if a unauthorized access um, happens, where, where do they go to? And then you can also define your flash message as well. And then down below is where we define our groups. So it'll look up our groups. And when you start to click those, you'll see the authorization policy code being generated automatically for you down below. So um, you can also then customize this. So if you want to add any additional parameters, um, liquid code, you can go through and do that and then you can then revert back to your, uh, you know, the code that we produce straight away by using that generate configuration on selected groups. So we are just letting you know that it's going to override your, any customizations that you've done. And then we save that. And we now have a authorization policy fully coded up. Um, assigned to those contacts. So super, super powerful, um, gives you full access to the platform OS system while doing it through a GUI with the history as well. So um, then the, so this, and then I'll talk through how uh, we then apply this to a particular page. But the last one I wanna go back in as C is the API token. So with Platform OS, you can basically create any page to be an API endpoint. And we also want to secure those API endpoints so that people can't push or pull information. So for that, we go and create an API token. So it's a key value pair. So the name, 
and the the secret or the key so you can click uh, generate your secret and it'll automatically create a a key for you which you can copy and paste and then you can provide this when someone is accessing your page you provide uh, provide this pair and they will be granted access so we can save that so it's also important to know in that um, you can actually add full liquid as well so you don't just have to have a basic uh, key so I think if you go to that top one, the OTM settings, and have a look at that one, and just do um, edit. So you can actually see how dynamic we can we can get with the, the keys too. Um, it's not a, a simple string. So now we've made our secure zones and API tokens, we're gonna go to the site manager. So we're gonna go back a level, uh, go to pages. And we've actually, so this is a major update as well. So you can see we've got three tabs. We've got content, system, and APIs, and JSON pages. So they're all technically pages inside Platform OS, but we decided to split them up, make them easier to, to manage. So if we go and edit a page, um, let's pick a content page, and we'll add the, uh, let's edit that one, yep. And we'll see, so, uh, we've also recently added the SEO metadata and the open graph settings, and we have our security tab. So through our security tab, we can define how we want to secure that page. So whether it be through an API token or through a secure zone. So you can also add multiple of them. So if you want to enforce that that person um, has multiple secure zone access to access that page you can do that um, and then have your your redirection and flash message and um, the same thing when you create an api json page you secure that with an api token as well so super super powerful um, creating all standard platform os authorization policies and we will also actually suck it in as well. So if you're, you've produced this the code uh, externally to the Insights system, we will bring that into, into the UI. All right, so the next module we're gonna go through is online transactions. So this is, this is built for the, for the purpose of selling digital products. So we built a lot of web applications and we, we wanted a way to be able to sell things that aren't e-commerce and have a lot of flexibility. So e-commerce is, is another module that we're working on at the moment and that'll be released in a couple of months. But um, this is really focused on, on selling digital things. So the first thing you would do would you come in and, and add a transactional product. So um, you give it a name, um, and you give it a, a base amount. However, you can make the amount completely flexible and dynamic. So on your page, you can run a whole bunch of liquid logic to calculate a certain price and then pass that through to, to Stripe. Um, so we've got some currencies in here. So these are the ones that are currently supported with Stripe with a full dollar amount. The statement descriptor, so we pass this over to, to Stripe and that is what's shown up on the credit card charge. And also the, the product description. Um, so the moment we, we support Stripe and we're gonna to continue to add additional payment gateways over time. And so we'll save that. Okay, so now we have our product. So the, we'll go to the settings and I'll just show you a couple of things through the settings. Um, so you'll see here, this is actually looking at the installed modules on your instance. So um, the Stripe module that you've installed from the partner portal and then any additional ones that we add will show up so you can specify which particular payment gateway you would like. Um, so if uh, Adam, if you can go to that checkout page, I think it's the third tab. Oh, um, sorry. Um, third tab or second no no actually in your browser sorry a browser tab ah uh, the 
um, so I send you the forward slash checkout link. Um, if, yeah, that's it. So when you install this module, you actually get um, the code um, and all the, the page to be able to create what you want. So this, when you add a new card um, behind the scenes, we actually go and create that card inside Stripe and store the token into platform OS. So you can um, save all, all of your credit cards securely through Stripe. So we're using Stripe's um, Stripe Element JS, so that's uh, API compliant. Um, and also in that configuration, you can choose to room, uh, hide you know, the billing details if they're not required for you, and you can simply add a, add a new card and check out. So um, giving you all the code to be able to customize the, the website front end as well. All right, so we dip back into the admin, and we're gonna go have a look at what um, an order looks like. So we'll go view an order and we've got all of the details of that person. It links um, over to the customer's profile into the CRM um, with that link there. So uh, just tight integration within the system itself. So there's little Wells details. Um, and then we go to the payment gateway tab. So we've got all of the, the information that's passed back from um, in this particular case at Stripe, their um, payment ID, card IDs, and what have you. So we're also looking at a future update in the next couple of weeks, which will support multiple payments. So you can have three or four payments of, across one single order. Um, right now, we've got one payment for one order. So you place an order online. Now you want to actually configure what happens. So this is where we go to the notifications menu item and you've got the ability to customize the email. So um, you can see the failed, uh, refunded and success. We just go into one of those and you just customize the details that you want. Um, choose the email template that you, you would like. So, um, you know, you've got the, the, the two address up there is uh, the liquid that goes directly back to the person. We expose that because you may want to have multiple people in the, in the two field rather than the CC or the BCC. So um, just giving you access to absolutely everything that gets passed through to SendGrid to send your, your email. And then we get back to the notifications we can also see you've got webhooks. So you can paste in your webhook when you have a successful payment and kick off a workflow or a notification uh, or what have you. Um, okay, so that's online transactions. The other update, I don't know if this instance has it yet, but um, our database module. So it's where you create platform OS models, um, releasing a, a major update in a couple of weeks which has a bunch of different obviously new field types so that is markdown html and reference lookups so you'll be able to go to the database list you you can then um, add a new database or edit an existing one and with the add new field in here you can um, add html and markdown so um, you can add as many different fields as you like, specify whether they're mandatory or not, and then go through the UI. So we're gonna to continue to extend that field type. Um, but the, the reference fields is going to be fantastic where you can look up another field um, through a dropdown. So if you've got a database of vehicle um, manufacturers, and then you've got a database of models. You, when you're going in and editing and adding a record to the database, you can just look that up rather than having to um, put a text field in there. Um, okay, then the last thing I wanted to show was something that we're, we're working on, which is our event stream. So um, go to that second tab in there, in the, that Lucid chart for me. So I have shared this before, but this, this is what we're, we're doing with our event stream. So you can push any event from anywhere 
have any system inside this which will end up displaying in your event stream. So we'll also have a native integration with SaneGrid. So you will be able to track every time someone is sent an email, when they open an email, when they click on an email, and it'll be pushed into your event stream. Um, and then you can add events from every other system that you would like. So go to that, the last tab on there, Adam. Oh, I'm back. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so behind the scenes, there's a fair bit going on um, to make all of this work. So we're going to make it this super simple for you guys, but it's going to be super powerful that we can collect all the information directly out of your SendGrid account and then display that. So, um, you know, there's a API gateway. We've got um, SNS in there and we, we um, put some lambdas and set functions, bits and pieces. But um, I guess you just need to know that you, you can start to push anything in there. And then the beauty about this system is that because we use um, Amazon's SNS, you can run a workflow of any event. So an event now becomes actionable. So you can create a, a whole separate workflow based on a particular event type. So um, Amazon's SNS is a, is a fantastic tool where you can basically subscribe. You can push do push notifications, SMSs, emails, um, quite complicated workflows. And then that then pushes back another event and then you can kick off another workflow. So you can be really, really dynamic. Um, and I've got a, a, I think we had an example um, of event stream and I'm in another one of those tabs. I think it might be the, uh, so the uh, Chrome tab. Oh, all right. So here's one. So um, this is the the proof of concept that we've done this week. So we're going to be adding full markdown support so that you can actually uh, click through and make parts of the event stream hyperlinked. Um, and we'll also have a details tab. So if you hit, uh, you know, find out more information, you have to be able to see the full payload. And um, then we're adding in filtering and searchability so that you can um, have the one, there's one global event stream, but you could have a customer event stream. So we'll be adding a customer's event stream inside the CRM where you see everything that Lowell has done. Um, you could then have the company event stream, which shows you all the things that that company has done. So all the contacts that relate to that particular company, then you could filter the system messages to see only the system ones um, or the user ones. So it becomes super, super powerful. This is all data in platform OS. So this is um, stored as a record inside the model. And then you just need to write your graph query as to what you want to display from that event stream. So look, we're super excited about this. It's, it's going to be um, a way to understand what is happening behind the scenes. So uh, it, it's, you know, when someone submits a form, it, it doesn't just do it in the background and, and you have to go and check. So um, we will actually be logging the fact that that form has been submitted then that person was sent that email and then you're tracking whether they're opening it or clicking it as well. Um, you know, so you can add in whether someone's subscribed to a secure zone, logged into a secure zone. If they've paid their invoice in zero, you can push that in here. Um, you know, so it, it's super flexible and powerful and we basically give you an API endpoint and it is simple as the manager fields are a message and a time, a date time, and that's it. And then if you decide to add a whole bunch of additional data, then we store that too. And then we make that searchable. So um, this expect to see this in the marketplace. It's, uh, it's coming out soon and we can't wait to see what people do with it. So just to finish off, I just wanted to go um, to the partner portal and show the full range of insights modules that are available to, to purchase now. And um, one I haven't talked about is our customer facing admin
we, I'm we glad lost. we're doing this demo because uh, Zoom is not liking me today. It keeps kicking me out and restarting automatically. Um, so the customer facing admin template. So a, a lot of the scenarios and projects that we take on are web applications. So the admin is what the user sees, right? So they're, they're not a, a website. And I think that that's really where Insights is, is a fantastic fit for building complicated web applications. So we um, made this boilerplate so that you've, what we logged into before we call the, um, the Insights instance admin, and then we've got our, our customer facing admin. So in some projects we have five different um, admins that are all customized for that particular audience. So for here, you would, um, you know, install this on the, the instance and there's a configuration screen that you can customize what the URL is. And um, yeah, let's go and do one, Adam. Um, so, you know, a couple hundred bucks, but it will save you about 10 to 15 hours of setting up of work with a, with a single click. So um, you click on, on buy, Come on, Adam, buy it. And, um, <laughs> and it'll ask you what do you want to have for your, your slug URL and um, you, know, uh, you set that up through the, the module settings. Um, but yeah, it gives, gives you a, a login, logout dashboard and then you start adding all of your, your logic and business no. requirements inside that, that additional admin. So we, we, you know, we're probably going to start exposing us some in internal terms that we use. So we've got the customer facing admin, the admin face admin, the instance admin, uh, you know, which had to give them names because that does uh, become many, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a good way to get up and running very, very quickly. So full suite of insights modules. So it's basically a, a, a pick and play. So you just, so the core, the core is mandatory. And with the updates coming to the platform OS marketplace, um, as far as uh, dependency modules, it's um, going to be really, really helpful. So you install the core and then you add any additional stuff. So the core there, free, 100% free. It'll always be free and we're continuing to add to that. So with the, uh, the core is the, all the CRM. Um, and we're also adding activity so you can log a meeting or a phone call uh, as part of that, that, that CRM. So if, if you're not sure on, on what to do when you, you create a platform OS instance and you want to have some sort of UI installed, once you create your instance, go into the marketplace, add the core, and it'll give you full instructions about how to, how to log in and you've got a fully fledged admin for free to play around with. You can invite other admin users and then um, utilize any of the insights, other modules that you would like, or you can just take it from there and start coding, right? So you can start adding your own menu items and, and, um, and going from there. So the last thing I want to show was um, a beta of our new components documentation site. So um, I think it's on the left. Yeah, that one. So um, with all of, uh, you know, we, we use these components. So if we go back um, on that tab there, Adam, to the general menu item. So you've got all these individual components that you can use to create your web application. So if we go under the data entry, for example, you'll see all the different types of inputs. So you click on one, so if you, you want to enter a phone number, so you've got your snippet there, you can press that try itself button. It opens up a JS fiddle. Um, but you know, all you really need to do is copy that, that code and um, that's it. All, all, all the magic happens um, using um, uh, what's the, uh, I can't think of the, um, the JavaScript one, but um, we, we make these components available across any framework. So Vue, Angular, or React. So you've got cards in there, you've got credit card pickers. Um, so all, all sorts of different things.
So yeah, there you go. There's an update. Am I on mute or not? No, nope. no, not now. Oh, okay. All right. Well, brilliant. Well, lucky I wasn't um, talking throughout that because uh, I think I wasn't on mute the whole time. Wow, boy, um, you guys have made us pale into insignificance uh, between Luke and and Shane. I don't know why uh, Platform OS bothered uh, to share anything. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, both the site glider and CBO teams are obviously working day and night behind the scenes. Absolutely brilliant. I'm going to stop the share. Well, that worked out well. I hope I, I hope I did it justice, mate. You probably uh, would have been able to drive it a little bit better, but yeah, no, uh, I, think, I think you did a fantastic job. We got there. All right. Uh, we, good team. All right. Well, uh, anything to help sales. <laughs> Uh, good stuff for all everybody it's question and answer time so please everyone uh, throw out your questions Adam Cook has left so we probably won't get any questions hey Adam watching this later just after the hour maybe uh, you want to all take a look at the video the recording afterwards and, and come back but definitely blown my socks off like literally my socks i'm not going to show you my bare feet but, um i can assure you my socks have been blown off and uh you can reach out to both luke and shane directly uh what, what are your contact details guys you want to just put them up in the chat and then we'll include that as part of our next thing i think shane's probably dropped out again in his dodgy hotel internet connection and luke if you want to whack up your uh your email address there would be great. But yeah, fantastic. Obviously, two very distinct uh, solutions with SiteGlide and CBO. I think uh, you can see that uh, from the SiteGlide perspective, very targeted and focused in, in their approach. And obviously, CBO's solution uh, in the way that they're going to market is very distinctly different. So I think uh, everybody has got opportunity to, to work across the board here, uh, which is exactly what we wanted to showcase with Platform OS, just the, the sheer flexibility and power behind the scenes. So we'll, um, we've got a question actually. Shane has popped up his email. Luke has put up his email. So Luke at siteglide.com, Shane at cbo.com. And Daryl's asking, any ETA on including other modules in SiteGlide still on the roadmap? So that's a question for Luke. I think you mentioned e-commerce and some other things. Yeah, do you mean our modules, Daryl? I assume you do. So um, I did have a slide to share on that, actually. Um, we've got e-commerce coming very soon, email marketing. There's, I can just refer to it quickly. There's billing, then events is on there as well. We're looking at a zero integration and then we're going to look at some like lots of marketing automation so things like triggers and just really data driven um event driven uh marketing automation and triggers so external modules um so would that be things like integrations or perhaps working with other platform west marketplace modules uh, if it's the latter we are looking we're actually working trying to do a joint project and working together on how we can standardize some things so that marketplace modules can then become site glide modules, for example, and we would release some um, documentation on how you would then submit that to us to become a site glide module. So there's a lot going on to try and be more collaborative there and um, standardize so that things could work between, between other services better. And if it's external um, like integrations, you've got, I don't know if you saw the last town hall that we did, but we've got our CLI so that you can build things directly uh, on platform OS. You've got our API, public API, so you can do integrations and also our Zapier integration. So you can connect up to, to loads of other external modules. But yeah, it looks like it was marketplace ones. So um, yeah, hopefully I answered that. We're, we're really keen to make it possible for partners to build their own modules and um, integrate them with any platform OS core modules as well. Stencil being JavaScript, I would have thought that's something front end that you would be able to do and um, you've got the CLI as well. So I don't think we would limit you there in any way, but I'd need to know more. Um, oh, sorry. I think, that's, Shane, that's... I think Shane was mentioning in yeah. the... Yeah, sorry. That was, the... that was uh, I, I sorry. thought of the, uh, the, what we use for our components. 
Um, so we centralize the components to be able to utilize in multiple frameworks. Great. Good, solid answer from Luke there to Daryl on that. Um, and Shane, yeah, just mentioning you know, the other framework that they're supporting there on, on um, Insights. Any other questions? All right, well, if there's none, there's none forthcoming. Uh, we will wrap it up. Another great session uh, over, over an hour's jam packed full of mind blowing stuff. Uh, like I'm just thinking about how I can now create a page, secure it, groups. I'm thinking about how uh, within, as a WSI IC, I can start to get all the, the things that BC had and then some. So I think there's something for everything for everybody here. Awesome. I will see you on Slack. Uh, and for those watching the video, feel free to reach out. And you've got the details for Shane at cbo.me, Luke at siteglide.com. And everybody, thanks for coming in and uh, watching another town hall. See you at the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, guys.